Hello, my name is Shane Riley, and this is a screencast on how to get started with accepting button inputs to move a player sprite using the Pico 8 Virtual Console. The Pico 8 Virtual Console is a fantasy game console that has a 128 by 128 pixel square 16 color display. The programming code that's used is a subset of Lua and the application itself has a built-in editor for code, sprites, sound effects, and audio. You can obtain Pico8 by purchasing the Voxatron video game. You can grab that from Steam or get a DRM free copy right off their website. So we're going to start by creating a Pico8 file. If you read the manual you'll see where these are located based on what operating system you're in. So I'm going to create that and open up my editor. And I'll run Pico 8. This will give us a boot sequence. And from here we can load a file. Now this says could not load. That's because we don't have the appropriate headers to the file. So if you want to start from a blank file, we need to add the headers to it. So we go back and load. We now have the program loaded in memory. If we press the escape key at this point, we'll be taken to the code editor. And up here we have icons for the sprite editor, the sprite map editor, sound effects, and audio. We're going to start by drawing a sprite for our little character. put some feet on them, draw some pants, give them a shirt, put a block head on him, give him a little bit of a beard. And now down here, you'll have a completed 8x8 sprite. You can copy and paste this by hitting either Command-C or Control-C and paste it with Command-V or Control-V. And here I'm going to simulate some walk animation. So there's the three sprites we're going to be using. I'm going to hit escape to go back to the file menu and save it. I'll go back to my code editor and we'll see that we have all of our sprite data after the GFX flag. Our code is going to exist right below this Lua flag. And we have two functions that we can define that are picked up by Pico8 and called once every 30 seconds. We have an update function. And a draw function. The difference being if the program can't run at a full 30 frames per second, this draw function will just be called as soon as it's able to call. So we want to start out by just having a render test of our sprite. We're going to start out by clearing the screen. That's the CLS function. And then we have another function that we can find in the manual here. 
we go down into the API. There's the clear screen function. And we have this SPR function to draw a sprite. The sprite is going to be a zero based index. And we can see which sprite we want to use by going back to the sprite editor. You'll see here there's an index value. So we've got sprites at 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to give it the x and y position that we want the sprite to be drawn at. So we're going to call SPR. We want to draw sprite 0. And we're going to draw him at 50, 50. Again, the entire screen is a width and height of 128 pixels. So now that we've made modifications, we'll load the file. And we'll run it using Control-R. So there's our sprite. To get back out of the run mode, we hit Escape. So now we want to set it up so that we're keeping track of the player position based on the arrow key movements. We're going to start by creating a player object. And we'll set the starting x and y position. We'll move them in a little ways from the top edge. The sprite we're going to be using to render him is 0. And I'm going to set a speed property to control how fast we're going to move the sprite based on the x and y position. So in our update function, we're going to check and see whether or not a directional key is pressed. Back up at the top of this documentation, you'll see a hello world demo. This is calling the btn function and passing in a numeric value for the buttons that are available. We have buttons from 0 through 5, and those are left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, Z, and X in that order. So with button 0, we're checking to see if left is pressed. If left is pressed, we're decrementing the X value, and so on for the other three buttons. We're going to do a similar if statement here. And we're going to use some shorthand addition and subtraction operators that are available in Pico 8. Again, Pico 8 is a subset of Lua, so we don't have all of the Lua language available, but we do have some added features to it. We want to adjust that by the player speed. I'm going to copy this for buttons 1, 2, and 3. So if button 1, player x increases, it's going to be player y. We're going to decrement. and we'll increment if we're pushing down. So now we can change this to draw our current player sprite, our current x position, and our current y position. We'll go back and reload and run that. And now we've got it moving across the screen. We still have to add in the ability to animate between the sprites while it's moving. So we're going to stop that. And we're going to make a move function. We're going to start the player as not moving. So we'll set that to false. If we call move, 
then we start the moving. We're going to increase the sprite index and then check and see if we've exceeded the number of sprites on the player. So we know that the last sprite index is 2 since we have 3 sprites. So if it's greater than 2, we need to reset it to 0. And now to call this, we just add the function call to each of these. We'll reload, rerun, and now we got him moving around. But if you'll notice, he stops sometimes in an animation where he's got one leg lifted up. We want to reset him so that he's standing when the movement stops. So we'll start this update loop by setting his moving flag to false. And down here we check and see if it's not moving. If he's not moving, we'll reset the sprite to zero. We'll come back here, reload the demo, rerun it with control R. And now when he stops, the sprite sets back to the first sprite. So that's an example of movement using the keyboard keys. Some features you'd probably want to add in are checking to see if your sprite has moved outside of the bounds of the screen, and eventually you'll probably add in some collision. So thanks for watching. You can see a link to all this code in the show notes as a gist on GitHub.